Hello, everyone. It is April 6th, 2021. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. Welcome to this week's episode. So today I'm going to show you how, with a free program called DaVinci Resolve, so you can clone yourself and, and, and play a duet. Or a trio. Or a quartet. Or, or, or more. You can create this virtual ensemble where you're playing all the parts. And of course, it, it's, it's a cool effect and, and particularly useful in this current time. And I'm going to show you how you do it because it's pretty easy. But first, I want to talk about some things that you'll want to think about and do before you even get to the computer that are going to make your life so much easier. So the very first thing that you want to think about is what piece of music you're going to use, because some pieces are better suited for this than others. So your best option, the easiest option, is one that has no uh, tempo alterations. It, you, that you could play with a click track, for example, essentially with a metronome that it's not going to change a very, very steady beat because that's going to be the easiest to sync up the two parts, right? To have both parts when you're recording them end up fitting together. That's the easiest option. Another thing to look for is something where one of the parts is playing a steady, fairly fast stream of notes, because then even if you do have some rubato and some push and pull that that part you'll be able to record that part first and then play along with that. So I've done three of these things that I've posted, right? So many years ago, I did Box Ave Maria. That was an example of a piece that I like to play with a certain amount of flexibility in terms of tempo, but that the accompaniment, the, the Bach part, the, the, the prelude, um, has these steady 16th notes. So I recorded that first and then that I could play along listening to that with headphones. I could record the second part and hopefully stay somewhat together. It's not perfect, actually. I mean, it's not it's not not the best ensemble playing, but that's an example of a piece that is a good candidate for this. Um, the Winter's Day trio that I did is a very steady pulse. There's a couple of times where there's a little bit of a writ and then we get back into it. Other than that, it's, it's just like very, very steady, rock solid. So another good candidate. The final piece that I did, that duet, the Renier duet, is actually not the best candidate because it would be nice to have a certain flexibility in, in terms of tempo there, a chance to breathe a little bit. And certainly we could if we were playing both the same room. And also the fact that first one part and then the other part has the moving part, has the steady steady notes, the faster notes, makes it difficult as well. So thinking about that beforehand, right? Because what you'll want to do, even if you're using a click track, uh, which I, I haven't, I've not done, I, not, I don't have any experience with that, but that is an option if it's a very, very steady piece. Even if you're using, using a click track, you want to record one part first, for example, and then if it's say a duet, one part first, and then have that playing along, listening to it with headphones so that you're not picking it up with your mic while you play the other part, right? That's gonna give you your best chance of actually syncing together. And with the with the Renier, I actually had the video of the second harp part, I think that I recorded first. I had that playing so I could watch some visual cues that I was trying to give myself to help, for example, these longer bars where the second harp part's not doing a lot or nothing to try to one, two, three, give that cue. Again, just to try to get the ensemble as tight as possible, because it, it can be trickier than you think. So that's kind of the first step, choosing the music and a good music candidate will make a lot of difference. So then the other important thing to think about is, is your setup, your, your visual setup. So in the ideal world, you set up your camera such that it, the field of view includes all the players, all the spots that you want to include. So if it's a duet, it's going to be able to include, say, both the harps or the space, you know, if you're only using one harp, but shifting the harp over, that space where that harp is going to be. So for example, for that Renier duet, I didn't really have the room to set up both harps and have that amount of space with the, with the background that I wanted. And that caused me some problems, which I'll show you on the, on the computer. Um, Whereas with a Winter's Day trio, I framed that shot up, right? Set up my camera, 
locked in all the settings, so it's manual focus, focused where I wanted it to, uh, auto uh, so manual exposure, right? So the exposure is not going to change. And then I have that backdrop and that setting and the lighting to some extent, of course, it's outdoors, but as much as possible, the lighting, everything is going to be the same for all, in this case, three different takes. That's going to make your life so much easier than, for example, trying to record yourself in one spot and then that very same spot again. If you're doing that, just again, be aware of lighting because if you're going to try to put one take here and one take here, if this side is darker than this side, then for both those takes, you know, when you put them side to side, that's not going to work. So if you are not able to frame up the entire shot, what you want to do is try to have that lighting be as, as neutral and even as possible. So no, no graduations from left to right in terms of lighting. So those are going to make your life easier. Those, those things are going to make your life easier. So now let's get over to the computer and look at how we actually do this with DaVinci Resolve. All right, here we are in DaVinci Resolve. And I'm going to show you the system requirements for DaVinci Resolve because it is somewhat intensive. It does require a, a decent graphic card, but it's free. So there's, there's a studio version, which you can pay for, which has a few additional things, um, it, which is what I have, but what I'm going to show you can be done on the free version. And basically 95 or 99% of the functionality that you would want is available in the free version. So it's a fantastic program and it's, it's used the, the, it's first, first and foremost, uh, color grading program. And as such, it's used by, you know, major film production teams, but it's also an excellent editing program and well worth learning if that's something that you want to, are interested in. So here, right, is an example of the finished product, that Winter's Day Trio. And sorry, my system's bogged down a little bit because I'm also trying to screen cap this. But anyway, there we are, all three of us, as it were, playing together. So how do we do that? So I'm going to go in here, show, here's the trio with, with no edit. And it's, yeah, it's going to take a moment to load. So what I've done is I've put all three clips on the timeline. So down here on the bottom is, first of all, here's your media. And so you can drag stuff in here. You can open, um, open folders through that. Cut page, which I, I generally don't use. Then the edit page, there's fusion, color page, audio, far light, and then export. So we're going to go to this edit page and we could drag and drop from Windows Explorer, or we could have gone to the media page and opened a folder, imported stuff and had our files in here and drag them in there. Right. So here, like we can drag snow in here and there it is. Now I have already lined these up correctly and that obviously can take a little bit of doing. So here we would want to kind of see the waveform of all of these and try and line that up. So for example, if we zoom in, which alt and the mouse scroll wheel will zoom you in or control plus and minus. And what we might look for is something where we know that everything is supposed to line up. In this case, we're doing these rolled chords at the beginning, but I think these are solid chords, for example. You know, there's a spot, right? Where, well, I guess it's not lining up that well. Oh yeah, here it is. These are lining up. Um, uh, and are these, for example, lining up? Uh, for the most part, uh, Shift Z will also zoom you in a little bit or zoom you all the way out to see the entire timeline. The beginning, as I say, is a little bit tricky because the bottom two should line up, but the top part, which is the wind part, is actually a rolled chord, so it starts a little bit early, right? Anyway. Uh, that's a little bit beyond the scope of what I'm talking about here, but you'll try to line everything up based on the waveform so that it hopefully all fits together nicely. 
And then we have all three of these. I'm going to just shrink my audio down a little bit. Three of these lined up nicely here. Okay, so I've chosen to put the bells on top, then snow in the middle, which is the middle person. And finally, the wind section, which is over here on the bottom of the timeline. You can do it that way. It doesn't, doesn't hugely matter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the color tab. Now, if you don't see these down here, that's clips up here. We press clips. We can get a little bit more real estate if we get rid of it. But by having them there, we can switch to the one we want to edit, which in this case is this one right here. You can see the black coat right there. Okay, so what we're going to do is simply draw a box around the area that we want to keep. So I'm using the mouse wheel to scroll in and out. We're going to scroll out a little bit. Uh, if we want, again, a little bit more space, we can get rid of clips. Right, click that. Oop, clips. We, we will want to see this nodes. We want to make sure we have this, which is this area here. Um, we don't necessarily need to see the open FX. We're not going to use them in this. Um, OK, but I'm going to uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll get them, keep, leave them off. So what we're going to look for, and you might not see this down here because these tabs might be different. I'm going to stay on the color wheels. And over here in the scopes, the might be a parade or a waveform or various different things. That's not, again, that's going to be on the scope of what we're doing here. But what we're looking for is up here, right? We're going to look for window, which is this button here. So we're going to select the window. And then we could, for example, draw something with this tool. Go boing, 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 boing. But I'm just going to reset the node grid. We're just going to click the rectangle. Easy enough. We're going to move it over here. Oh, and we'll talk about that in a moment and, and drag it down to kind of there. So it doesn't have to be super precise. And if I if I zoom in and I want to adjust this picture, I hold down my middle mouse wheel and and scroll the mouse around, move the mouse around. So this line here doesn't have to be super precise. We we just want to make sure that we're including all of this person. So if, if the hands gesture, right, is there at any point? No, in fact, we could be even closer if we wanted to be. And then we'll just see how that is with a middle person. And this is a bit of an angle, that's okay. Now this, see this red thing? This is the um, sort of the blur, the, 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 the merge between that's going to be between them. And we can control that as well with this soft area here, the four sides. You can always click and hold, left click and hold, and drag left or right to control this number. And that just can help. It, it, it means it's more of a graduated edge that we see it at, on this line right here, we start to see move from, from this picture to the next picture, which, we, which we're not doing right at the moment, but we will in a moment. And, and so a certain amount of softness is, I think, good in this case. Okay, we've done that, but now how to make it so that it's only this that we show? Well, we right click in this nodes area here that I'm kind of circling, we're gonna right click and say add alpha output, it's this blue dot. And then we simply draw this, click and draw a line. Boop. And that means it's now outputting just this selected area, right? So if we move this over, it, start, it erases that. And if we move this over here, we, we no longer see, see this, this, uh, this excellent person over here playing away. So now we can actually kind of see, yeah, we got lots of room here, right? And you can see because we framed this, it was the same setting. It's pretty seamless. Now it's not entirely perfect because again, it was outdoors. And so that means I had no control over the light. We'll see that in particular with a, with a wind, with the last person, um, there was some light at that point. The sun had gotten through the clouds. And so we kind of see that. But if we zoom in a little bit, doing this, again, just kind of creates a bit more of a blend between those two. So it's not just a harsh edge. 
but a blend. And I, I think that's it's, it's, it's worth doing again. I think we've got a fair amount of room and we can kind of scrub through this just to see for snow is snow, you know, is, is the snow hand getting cut off, right? Like if we were all the way over here, so you can see this blend, we still see that, but at some point we might start to lose. No, we're pretty good. Oh, right there. There you can really see that blend effect, right? So it's not a, it's not a hard line cut off, but kind of a blend. So we got lots of room here. So again, that this is where it's the more that you can do that in the, as you take the video, the easier the post-production work is. Got lots of room. There we are. Great. So then let's bring back our clips. We'll select the snow and we're going to do, well, we could do the same thing with snow. Yeah, we will do the same thing with snow. I think that's going to, yeah, we're just going to take our power window, click a rectangle, click here, drag. Oh, yeah, okay. Drag this about to there. So again, this area, I mean, we could be in here. It doesn't really matter, but we might as well be all the way outside. And I think we'll try to have a bit of a blend there as well. Then again, we're going to right click over here, add alpha output and drag that over. Aha! There we have, we'll get rid of this clip so we can see a little bit better. There we have um, the uh, wind player, right? Uh, yes. What is it? Bells, snow, and wind. Great. And again, I don't know if you can see on this, but like, look, look at that. If we, if we, um, if we get rid of this alpha output, I just deleted it. You can see that there's not quite the same. It's not quite the same lighting. So again, we can, you know, we can maybe blend that a little bit. And of course we could tweak the individual colors of these. So now if I go back to my edit page, look, there they all are. Yeah, sorry, the playback is, is a little slow because I'm also, as I say, screen capturing this. So yeah, oh, so there, there we can see now there's a spot right where it's, it's quite obvious that, uh, let's go back to the clips and select this quite obvious so again we might want to try and oops we've lost that there we are yeah we might want to try and well maybe we'll try to get that maybe as close as possible to the middle so that we can kind of have this light over here and then somehow it magically kind of falls off but that you know that looks that looks okay so, and that's it, right? That, there you have it. Um, of course, this program, as I say, is capable of a lot more. Just to give you an example, um, let's look at, here was the, the actual final version. Um, so I did a, a color grade here, right? In terms of, let's control full screen that. Um, and if I get rid of this, just the colors are much, much different. I try to try to make the people pop a little bit and the background's a little bit bluer now. Um, so you can see, right, the, some of the differences. If I get rid of both of those, just some of the, yeah, a little bit more vibrancy. Anyway, whether it's a good color grade or not, I don't know, I'm not a professional. Um, but fun, all these, all these options, right? Where you can play around with just like Photoshop for videos. So again, super powerful program. Um, okay. I wanted to just show you the Renier and the difficulties of that. So here it is with no edit and you can see because this wasn't filmed in framing the whole thing and being able to see the whole thing and then filming the individual playthroughs. You can see how not only does, does the colors not match entirely, but also how the lighting, even though I tried to adjust for it, is, is um, much lighter on this side than it is on this side. So that 
merge does not work very well. So I had to do uh, had to do a certain amount of editing there. Uh, you can see also quite a, a bit of a color grade on that as well, um, where I actually masked out the side of the harp so that um, because like if we get rid of effects the other way, right, okay. Um, tried to match the color, right? Here you can see matching the color and then masked out that side actually with fusion, um, with a keyer in fusion. So yeah, um, wasn't perfect. But again, there's an example where you can do so much in post, but like anything, the more <laughs> recording or anything, the more you can do in the original take, the better the original take is, this makes everything so much easier. So let me just walk you through one more time that process of, of what you would do. Uh, where are we, trio with no edit? And I will have chapters on this as well, so you can easily go to this if you want it just a refresher. So I'm just going to reset all my nodes and grades and we'll select this one. And so we go to, we go here. We might be on curves, whatever, because again, like curves, we can really, um, yeah, let's reset that. And that was just a right click to get that context option. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this window. It doesn't, it's a circle, but anyway, this power window, click on this square. It doesn't have to be a square again, we could draw them. But click on the square, use it to show the area that we want to show, right? Right click over here, add alpha output, it's a blue dot, drag this blue to that blue, and now this clip will only be displaying whatever is inside of this window. And then we can do the same for this, add a power window. So again, we actually, because the other one is on top of us in the timeline, we only need to do that. Maybe a little bit over, add an alpha output, draw that over. And then, oh, that one appears as well. Um, right, this doesn't matter until we get to here where we will stop seeing us, but to be safe, we can go all the way there. And again, we can play around with a blend. Again, if there was a certain things we wanted to catch or not catch, or again, if we were worried about the leaves blowing up here, maybe we would use this pen tool to try to like really create uh, just, uh, oops, I don't, I don't want to join that, um, to create a, an area that only specifically worked uh, on a certain spot. But uh, yeah, hopefully that, that gives, you, gives you the gist of things. And a super fun project to, to try, right? To s choose a good piece of music that will work, hopefully something pretty steady, and play around with creating a virtual duet. So hope that was useful, hope that was interesting, and I will see you in a couple of weeks' time. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>